G'day guys, John here, Chief Instructor with FPV Australia. Welcome back to Drone Sense. Today, I'd like to talk to you about where you can and can't fly your drone. Um, and I want to talk specifically to the recreational pilot, the guy or girl who's flying for fun, and the sub two kilo operator who might be flying commercially. The REOC holders, they have their own set of rules and regulations and conditions on their OC and all that sort of stuff and can gain approval to do all sorts of stuff. So I'm not going to be uh, interested in them today. Today's about the recreational pilot and the sub two kilo or excluded operator. There are rules and regulations about where you can and can't fly your drone depending on the airspace you're in and where you are located and that sort of stuff. There are maps that are put out um, by the authorities that show you where this airspace lies and for the REOC holders who might be watching this um, they've already been trained in all of this. So I'd like to show you now one, let, let's have a look at one. This, this is a, a part of a VNC or a visual navigational chart. Now these charts were originally designed at the manned aircraft pilot traversing across the countryside but they're also used by certified drone operators to know what the airspace is in where they're flying. For the sub two kilo and the recreational pilot though, it's probably a bit over the top. Um, and, and if you're not going to operate in various locations scattered all over the place, you keep going back to the same location. They're probably you know, a little bit too much information for you. So what I thought I'd do in this video is just break down the, down the airspace and then tell you, tell you the rules and, and, and you know, what is required around different airspaces. There's, there's restricted airspace, for example, that you shouldn't be in at all if you're a recreational pilot. Uh, or, a, uh, or a sub two kilo operator if that airspace is active. I'll tell you about that. There's controlled airspaces and uncontrolled airspaces and there's all different categories of them. Where the, the sub two kilo or the recreational pilot uh, is gonna meet up with these controlled airspaces is generally around airports. If we look at Canberra, for example, here's Canberra on that, uh, on that map, on that VNC map, and you can see this blue dashed line that surrounds Canberra. Um, that tells the manned aircraft pilot and anyone else who wants to read this map about airspace that the, the da inside the dashed line is a controlled airspace sector all the way from the surface of the earth, SFC, as, as abbreviated here, up to 3,500 feet above the ocean. So that individual knows that the airspace goes all the way to the surface of the earth and it is controlled. And in this case, it's controlled by the tower sitting in the Canberra airport. This is where predominantly drone pilots are gonna bump into controlled airspace, around controlled aerodromes, where that airspace comes to the ground. There's a few different classes of controlled airspace that the drone pilot might meet. Class C or Class Charlie, and Class D or Class Delta, as we call it. Uh, class Charlie and Class Delta, again, are around controlled aerodromes. And, and the little difference between the two is the Class Delta aerodrome, such as Camden, um, doesn't have radar. So it gets a different category of airspace. But it's still controlled, and it's controlled by the tower. Firstly, what are the rules surrounding flying in controlled airspace for the REC pilot and the sub two kilo operator? Um, there isn't any really, other than to keep your eyes open, don't cause a hazard. Under that 400 feet, uh, well I shouldn't say there, there isn't any rules, There's in, there isn't many rules outside the standard operating conditions. You're not allowed to fly within three nautical miles of that controlled aerodrome, obviously, 5.5 kilometres. But other than that, the other standard rules apply, 400 feet, 30 metres, all, 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 all that stuff. There's no need to contact anyone. Um, there's some, there's some rumors floating around, oh, you've got to contact the tower when you fly in controlled airspace. You actually, as a rec pilot and a sub two kilo, you don't have to. As long as you're outside that 5.5 kilometers, three nautical miles, and you're not posing a risk to any other manned aviation, uh, uh, then you're fine to go and operate. The other big block of airspace that you're gonna uh, run into and predominantly be in is class G, class golf airspace. Now, here's the kicker. You won't actually find this marked on a map. Uh, it's not marked on a map. Class G is everything else that isn't classified as something else. So uncontrolled, unclassified airspace is simply Class G. Um, G for general aviation, I guess. It's, it's, it's uncontrolled, it's anyone's game, knock your socks off. Um, and there's no requirements or approvals to get into Class G airspace to fly a drone. How do you know what Class G airspace is? Again, the maps will tell you. But for the, for the rec pilot and the, and the sub two kilo operator, it's probably a whole lot easier if you jump onto an, an application that's been put out by the Civil Aviation, a, a Civil Aviation Safety Authority called Can I Fly There? This app will show you pretty much what is around you at your specific location, or you can drop a pin and have a look in advance. And it will tell you whether the, the airspace is class G and whether it's controlled. Now again, going back to what I just said a minute ago, it doesn't really matter whether you're in controlled, class C or D, or you're in class G airspace. The same rules pretty much apply for you 
400 feet, three, three nautical miles from the airport, all that sort of stuff. So there's no real differing fact there. What the Can I Fly Here app will do for you though, is tell you whether you're close to a helipad, you're close to a, another airport that might not be controlled or towered, uh, and there are rules about what you can do when you're within three nautical miles of those non-controlled aerodromes. The Can I Fly Here app will show you, and the rules are quite simple. There was a direction put out recently, 96 17. If you Google CASA direction 96 17, you'll find it, uh, that says if you are within the vicinity of these heliports and, and, and uh, aerodromes, and you, that is three nautical miles, and you become aware of a, an aircraft operating, uh, from the airport and to and from, you are to get out of the way and land immediately. If they're operating, you, you shouldn't be taking off in the first place. That's in the direction, direction 96 slash 17. The Can I Fly Here, or Fly There app will actually show you where all where all of them are. Uh, again, the REOC guys, they're gonna be using things like Oz Runways, and if, if you've got that and you're familiar with that, great, that's awesome as well. The Can I Fly There app is probably the best place to start for the REC pilot and the, and the sub two kilo operator. So, in that, you'll also come across restricted airspace. Now, restricted airspace is very different to the standard you know, Class C, Class D airspaces in the, in, in, fa in the fact that it can be switched on and off at will and it's controlled or managed by someone, uh, an organisation or a department or, or the like. There's civilian restricted airspaces as well as military restricted airspaces. So a good example, again, we'll go back to the maps, is have a look at the Nowra. Uh, down south of Sydney. The restricted airspace around uh, Nowra is quite large and different sectors of it come on and off at different times. The Can I Fly There app will actually show you where this restricted airspace is. There's only one little glitch to that. It won't tell you when it's active or not active. And when it's not active, you can fly there as a recreational pilot and as a sub two kilo operator, when the airspace is not active. Uh, I won't go into the great detail here in, in this particular video, maybe we'll do it on another one, but if you, if you register for a, uh, an application connected to the regulator called, and, and air services called NAPES, N-A-I-P-S, I'll put it up here behind me, uh, NAPES, if you can jump on there and register, you'll need an ARN to do it, get on there, register, put all your details in, you can log in and actually look up the details of all these restricted airspaces scattered across the country and find out whether they're on or off at a particular point in time. Uh, again, I might do a video on that specifically because I can show you how to do it all, but all I'm saying here is that you can fly in restricted airspace when it is not active. Um, if it's active, unfortunately, without the approvals in place, uh, you won't get into restricted airspace and you're actually not allowed under regulation to fly in it. So when it's off, it reverts to the underlying airspace uh, and in this case, a lot of narrow would be class G. So. The other bit of airspace that you might stumble across are danger areas. Now, danger areas, again, as shown on the map here, they're around specific uh, things that you know, pose threats and risks to aviation. A good uh, example of that is parachute jumpers. They'll often put a danger area around uh, a, a parachute jump site. The one at Wilton, south of Sydney near Picton, is a great example. Um, you are allowed to operate in a danger area without any further approvals or, or clarification required. It's up to the pilot involved to ensure he doesn't tangle with someone else. So um, be aware that if you end up in a danger area, there's other things happening and other things to consider. So that's about the strength of it. As far as where you can fly, there are some tag-ons that I wanna bring your attention to. National parks and state parks and all that sort of stuff are all getting their own policies and there's all these arguments online about, oh, can I fly in the national park and I can't and blah, 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 blah. The, the, the reality is a lot of these national parks have their own rules and regulation to the park about drone operators um, taking off and landing in the national park, for instance. And then there's these, this argument that all ensues online about, oh, well, if you take off outside the boundary of the park and fly over, it's, it's okay, you know. <laughs> You know, the intent of these, a lot of these national park regulations has come about because of idiots with drones and the fact that they're trying to manage wildlife. So it might be a, it seem simple to us to go, oh, what's, why can't I fly here? It's just a rocky outcrop on the ocean. But there's more to it than that. What I would suggest you do categorically, if you want to fly in a national park and take your drone, let's face it, there are some beautiful places to take some photos of in national parks. Contact the management of the park and ask don't just trollop in there with your drone, put it up, 
thinking you're entitled to do what, you, what you're doing because you're only going to make it bad for yourself and you're only going to make it bad for the rest of us. Contact the park managers and say, hey, I'm coming through, I'm on holiday, I'd really like to get some imagery of this particular location and talk to them. Um, that would be my advice to anyone. That includes REOC holders. We don't get carte blanche into a national park either. We still have to apply. So talk to the parks management. Um, other than that, like I say, the best place to start, can I fly there if you're a rec pilot or a, um, or a, or a, a hobbyist? That app will show you a whole lot of stuff that's, uh, that's going to affect you. Controlled airspace and, and non-controlled airspace, there's no real difference for the, uh, for the, the sub 2 kilo or the recreational pilot. Um, you don't need to contact anyone special, just keep your eyes out and make sure you know what's going on around you. The three nautical mile rules and all the standard ops like 400 feet and 30 meters, that all still applies. Restricted airspace. Um, it will be shown in the Can I Fly There app. Restricted airspace is controlled by a controlling authority, i.e. military or you know, CSIRO have one and uh, some mine sites have them and so forth. Tamora has one out there when they run the warbirds. They're all over the country. A lot of them are military. Uh, and you cannot fly in those restricted airspaces without approval if that airspace is active. Some switch on and off. It's up to you to know when it's on and the onus is on you to know when it's on and when it's off. NAPES. N-A-I-P-S, NAPES, if you register for NAPES, you can get in there if you know how to use it. Uh, maybe I'll do a video on that to show you how to use it uh, and have a look around. National parks and so forth and state parks have their own rules about what happens in their parks, so please make sure you check that. There are also rules around bushfires and emergency services. Please, please, I can't stress this enough, if there is a bushfire or any, just a fire raging in a paddock somewhere and you've got emergency services turned up to try and put that out, do not put a drone in the air anywhere near that. One, it's against the law. Two, it's dumb because if you get in the way of things like water bombers that can't get in there now because they've bailed out seeing drones in the air, well, uh, you, you're only causing grief for the people who's on the ground trying to, trying to fight that fire. The same with an emergency services uh, operation, car accident or some other situation. Don't put a drone up over it, please. It's, as I say, one, it's against the law and two, it's just dumb. Um, there are some regulations around um, uh, uh, beaches and so forth and flying over people's heads and I don't need to go into that because that's not airspace related but it's plain and simple you can't fly over people plain and simple that direction 96 slash 17 solved that I hope that's given you a bit more insight start with the can I fly there app that will certainly get you started as to where you can and can't fly your drone if you want to get further into the maps and so forth that we saw a minute ago the, uh, the VNCs and stuff. You can find them on the Air Services website. They're actually available now in a, in a big, large PDF. And I'll put some links in the, in the, in the video comments here, in the description here below. Do know that they will change though. The, the links will change depending on the, the, uh, the map because they get re-released every, every so often when things change. If you're interested, Oz Runways is, a, is an application that a lot of drone pilots are using and I use it not only in the drone world but for my, my, my manned aircraft world as well. It's, uh, it's an approved app under part 175. Um, so they have approval to deliver this information um, by CASA and to be accurate. So um, Oz Runways will deliver all those maps and it gets you access into NAPES for weather and for NOTAMs and restricted airspaces. It actually even shows you when airspace is active and when it's not active. So it's in a subscription based service, 100 bucks or 130 bucks or something a year. Um, it may be well worth it if you are really serious about where you're flying your drone. All I can say is the best piece of advice I've got for you is check and double check. Um, don't listen and, 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 and take advice from what you read online in Facebook threads because uh, uh, there's a lot of misinformation gets tossed around. I, again, I read another one just recently. Oh no, you're not allowed within 30 metres of a building. Bollocks. That doesn't exist. So. Um, Either, either research the regulations yourself directly and the airspace and what's requirements, or if that's a little bit over the top for you, I'm happy to help you. Um, pop me an email. You can find me at uh, simply john at fpvaustralia.com.au. 
that will find me. Training at fpvaustralia.com.au will get you straight in to the office here where we've all got oversight of that. You can call us if you like, 1300 FPV Oz. It's on the screen here, 1300 FPV Oz. Um, or the website, fpvaustralia.com.au. Uh, if you've got any questions, let me know. I hope this has helped you just uh, work out where you can and can't fly. Um, the, the, the major ones I want to say, stay away from airports. Three nautical miles of a controlled aerodrome, don't fly there. Um, within three knots of non-controlled, be very, very careful because there's little planes flying around and you don't want to get in the way. Use the app, it'll get you started. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you are flying a drone today, tomorrow, next week or next month, please do so safely and responsibly. We need safe skies for all of us. Enjoy.